Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Aram and I got a very interesting question this week. Does it pay to have a pause at the finish like the Aussies do or should you have a quick hands away? In this video, I'm trying to find out. All right, so I'm gonna buy a Roar Pro um, without covers. It's an assembly status. I wanna show you what it actually looks like to have a pause at the finish and what it looks like to have a quick hands away and what it does to the body. Now, first of all, what we're talking about is this. So you roll, then you have a hold and a nice holding pattern at the finish. And every time you look at the angle curves, you can see they, con they continue to go flat. So instead of, let me show you the difference. So a pause at the finish would be this flat curve and then a release. A quick hands away would look much different. A couple of years ago, I was actually quite a proponent of a naturally quick hands away. My idea was the finish, and I did a video about this, the finish is like a roller coaster you essentially come in and come out at the same speed. And that works. The video, the video was called, uh, there is no fast hands away. It was one of the first videos I ever did on this channel. Now, over the, over the years, I've come to like a style that predominantly works in low steady state where you actually pause at the finish and then you do the rest of the recovery. I think, as long as you don't do an exaggeratingly quick hands away, things are going to work. But that comes a bit with a caveat. And now let me explain why I am a proponent of a bit of a pause at the finish and when to do the pause. The question first is how should you do the pause and when? If that were a boat now, I'm at the finish, I would actually try to get my blades out of the water and then fetter. That's where I'd like to do the pause. You can do the pause here as well. That is fine too. It doesn't make a lot of difference. But the moment you do the pause, when you already have a bit of force on your shoulders, that may become a bit of an issue. And the reason why I do believe it becomes an issue is that when you're at the finish and your first intention is, I got to get the hands out quickly you spend more energy trying to get your hands away from the body than you spend on stabilizing your trunk at the finish. At the finish, you should stabilize your quads, the outside of your knees, connect them to the foot stretchers, have your abs, low abs, upper abs and back well connected, the lats here at the finish. So if you pull out, let's need to change the foot stretcher, foot stretcher settings. So, here at the finish, the latch should be well set up so that everything is aligned here. The question is, why do we need this? The finish essentially is the entry point to the quickest phase of the entire stroke cycle, the recovery. During the recovery, I believe that you don't slide forward, but you give the boat time to travel underneath yourself. So with the bar rower, this can be very well shown, I think, because if I'm now at the finish, let me accelerate for one stroke. Okay, hold. I essentially don't move. This is always the same. I'm almost, almost always at the same position. What moves is the boat. Now, as there is no water in a bar rower, what happens is that I I connect with an air fin. So of course this thing is traveling back and forth. The most important part about this is that during the recovery, you have sufficient control over the boat or the by rower to pull it underneath yourself. There's, I think it's a two part motion, honestly. It is to pull it and to let it travel. The, for the first part, it's a dynamic motion. Dynamic motion means there's active body motion involved. And parts of that active body motion is get the hands away. I don't like to have them fully extended because if you do this, your shoulders will be too stiff. 
and your back will become round. And the goal is not to bring the hands forward ultimately. The goal is to clear the hands away from the body a bit. I like a 70% extension, 80% extension. And then rock over, actively rock over with the pelvis. And it changes the way you sit on the seat. So instead of sitting on a center rear part of the seat, you move at the finish, you move to the center front part of the seat. That's an important sensation to look for. So at the finish, hands away 70%, rock over actively. Now, the reason why I don't like to do a quick hands away because it, it probably er creates the, sen the, the, the sense of urgency to extend your arms completely. Extended arms usually stiffen up the shoulders. If your shoulders are stiffened up, you hear the catch with pretty high and stiff shoulders, and that will, once you start to try, once you start to drive, bring the energy over the top of the shoulders into your back. That needs a lot of back muscles to stabilize the force your leg drive uh, create with a lot of um, energy. What is more suitable for that is to actually have lower shoulders. And try to activate the lats, tricep lats, armpit, armpit connection, because that engages your trunk immediately. We need to engage the trunk immediately. Now, I thought about for a long time, what is actually the most important part about the body, the upper body that generates the upper body swing? And I think it's, it's right underneath your chest, where the heart rate belt would usually be. Now, this is where I want my oar handles to be, and this is where I set up my elbows that way at the finish. So that is one connected element. Now, if I worked on a quick hands away, boom, I would overextend my arms. Most people do this um, because you have to consider you don't do this just in, in, in low steady state. You do it at a stroke rate 30 as well. And you try to speed everything up, also that part. And then you end up at the catch with too much load in your oar handles because you're too stiff. Because if the upper section of your back is round, it's almost impossible to stabilize the lower section of it, you know? You cannot have one section of the back round and the other one super stable. Most people cannot do this. So this is why I like to pause at the finish after your blades cleared the water. So here, finish, push down, fetter, maybe move away a bit, and then stop. At that point, I love to set up my abs. Oh, okay, it's just like a stone monument. I'm stable. You should not need the boat to stabilize you. You should stabilize the boat before trunk tension. And the reason why that's so difficult, um, I, the reason why that's so important is that the way you get your blades out of the water, left, right synchronicity, the amount of force you apply, boop, changes everything about how you set up the boat. You set up the boat at the finish. And, and in addition, the finish for me is the reset point. No matter how bad your stroke is going, you can always start from scratch if you have one fixture that is always stable. If you're too much in a rush to get your hands away quickly, there is no time to focus on that. I'm not preparing for a stroke grid 16 to 20. I'm preparing for a stroke grid 30 plus, which is what we have in a race situation. You have to be aware that in a race situation, none of that pause will be left. So the way it looks now, I may have a pause. Okay, that's loose. Loose and easy. Now, if I bring the rate up, 26, 28, 30. Now, at 30, there's almost nothing left. You see, it's not about having a pause in high stroke rate. It is about having a pause when you can actually practice the motion. It's a bit like Karate Kid. Jack, get on. Strong. Check it on. Firm. If it is true that the boat is the fastest in a recovery and we have to let the boat float and run, don't we disturb boat speed by bringing our hands away quickly and then slowing down? You see, the virus starts to move the wrong way. Let me show you again. Now back, 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 back. I'm still slow. Ooh, going in the wrong direction. In a boat, of course, the boat will not change direction, but it will slow it down. Because if you, if you slide slowly, you're not moving in correlation to the current boat to water speed. And that's what matters for me the most. So when you do the recovery, 
but recovery is always an answer to the current boat speed. You cannot just say, slide forward slowly, and then you break the boat speed. No, recovery is an answer to the current boat speed we have, so we better move in accordance to the current boat speed. Now, what do you want to do if the boat speed is high and you don't want to slide forward slowly in order not to break the well-earned boat speed that you just created during the drive? And what you then do is take a pause at the finish. And that's how you can still go with nice force during the drive. And during the recovery, you don't have to be endlessly slow. Versus, not a wrong thing in my opinion. Look how stiff everything is. Things don't work this way. So I hope this made sense and I hope this explanation is, is, is logical to you. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'm very much looking forward um, to your comments. If you have not subscribed to this channel, now is the best time to do this. If you want to know what this is, this is a Bioroa S1 Pro, one of the few ones that are available, um, pretty long waiting list. And that's it for today. Looking forward to seeing the next video. Bye-bye.